Surprise! It's a podcast. It's a Thursday. <laughs> I didn't have work today because I am moving. This is the Richmond Gooners podcast on Thursday, April 15th. Uh, with the Europa League quarterfinals, I am your host Ryan here with Tom. What it do? And with Joey. We love you all, Snow. We, we do. do. Don't we all? And yeah, so it was the uh, it was the quarters of Europa second leg uh, away to Slavia Prague, which you know should not have been as nervy of a start <laughs> yeah. as it was, given how you know the the first leg went, but. Uh, you know, I think we all knew this is this is our only path to any sort of glory this season. So yep. everybody was, I mean, I don't know about y'all, but my butthole was a little pucker to start this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I have to give it the obligatory, we're Czech farmers. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> that they are, and, and, and they uh, showed it today. Yeah, and uh, we were, what, 3-0 up inside of uh, 20 minutes? Uh, 25 yeah. minutes? 24 minutes, 25 yeah. minutes, yeah, inside of 25 minutes. So, yeah. listen, we, the, the lads came to play today. <laughs> yeah. Uh, ESR was absolutely everywhere. Um, it's just I, I, I'd never seen that sort of mentality from him where it feels like uh, about 12 minutes in, he was like, all right, I'm going to take this shit over. Everybody just get the fuck out of my way. Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> that's and I was like, what in the world? This kid is going to be very good for us. They played, they played like it was a cup final. Yeah. And yeah. I, was, I was happy to see that. If we play like worried. that the rest of the way. We'll be all right. Yeah, we'll I mean, right. yeah, and you know, that was the thing is I'm, 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 you know, I'm setting up for the podcast. Yeah. Before the game started, my notes going. All right, well, you know, we either got to win this or a two-two draw or more or more goals in a draw will get us the away goals we need. And I'm thinking, you know, that's going to be the more likely scenario that gets yeah. us through. And we came out on fire. Absolutely, which, absolute fire. you know. I shouldn't say that. The first like five or six minutes were a little bit nervy. There was that bit where Chambers just got completely yeah, exposed. That was a, that was down a, the side, almost a feel out period, and then yeah, and then, and we, then we, they once we settled the into it, yeah, we, we we absolutely flipped the switch. Yeah, and, thank and, God that guy missed it because yeah. if if he if Chambers had given away a goal right there, that would have been a one way ticket Ooh, back to yeah, Southampton. Per persona yeah. non grata, yeah. yeah. Um and and but once we flipped the switch there, uh, and I just kept thinking, where where has this team been? Right. We've seen it in, in kind of in flashes, or as, as Theo Walcott used to say, Theo consistency in patches, which is like a, <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, um, it's an like oxymoron. Contradiction oxymoron. In terms, yeah. Yeah. It's like saying fundamentally paramount. Like. Yeah, fresh frozen <laughs> jumbo shrimp. <laughs> yeah, but uh, military intelligence, <laughs> two words combined that can make sense. <laughs> <laughs> to but the two I mean, like who mega you know, death is talking about uh, ESR and the like. I mean this. I wouldn't call it a coming out party for the kids because obviously they've been around and they've been doing stuff. But like yeah. you know, ESR Saka, um, they just to me bossed the first twenty five minutes of this game Absolutely. and just Absolutely. showed everyone else what's up. I think a lot of people were upset when they saw the lineup, and myself included. When I saw the lineup, I was like, "Oh no!" Because I, I, I thought it was a pretty good lineup. I mean, myself. well, I mean, I I stand corrected. And our, 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 our what what, what scares you about? If, if he, what was your concern? I wanted Gabrielle in the middle. Mm, sure, yeah. sure, but I think I, I think Ryan and I might have discussed this earlier, but. You know, Arteta has maintained since he got here that listen, if you're playing well, like you, you, you're going to continue playing. And Mari has been playing well, right? Um, but Martinelli get, bagged a goal the other day, and then yeah, uh, that. Oof. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. What's I'm tired wrong of beating that. that drum, but yeah. like I don't. And, and you and you saw it. You know, it, it, when when he. Uh, the it was near the end. It was garbage time. But in the 86th yeah. minute, I mean, he just completely laid yeah. waste to a dude while moving full <laughs> yeah. speed. He like deep right. three separate times. Yeah, full speed. Like, there's not a lot of players that can dribble at full speed like that and still make the move and do it yeah. so that cleanly. You know. Yeah. And like obviously today if he we finished that. That had been a world. Oh yeah. Yeah. It was and reminiscent of Gareth Bale's goal in the Copa del Rey that where he kind of went coast. It was reminiscent of that sort yeah. of run. You know. But you know, <sighs> they were. I think. To do the reverse of one of our favorite quotes, Dennis Green, mm -hmm. I think Slavia Prague are definitely who we thought they were. Yeah. Because... Czech farmers. Yeah. Because, okay, in that first, like, they were tough, and, and they had that guy that said the awful thing, and... But tonight, especially Saka, whoever their left back is should just... Retire right yes, now. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. On Twitter, they say, delete your account. I would say, like, you need to contact FIFA and just say, like, I'm just going to go back to being an electrician or whatever that is for a living because he just twisted him inside out yeah. and just really laid waste to him. Absolutely. It was, it was unfair, really. It was, if, if that had been a boxing match, the, his, his coach would have thrown in the towel. So yeah. this is, uh, yeah, they would have called it early. Listen, listen, I said this on Twitter, but uh, all four goals scored by black players. You mm. think the black lads were up for this one today? Yeah, I mean, that, I that, that has to have had something to do with it. I, mean, I think they then, were. But then again, I mean, that all went down before the first leg. Yeah. Right? So, like, I mean, I guess... 
I think they I think they wanted to come out and prove a point. Especially. Well, even more so because we were on. I mean, it was not looking good for us. Yeah, we should have. We should have. They had the goal. Yeah, we should have battered them last time. Yeah. Just a lot of what I would consider standard we, opportunities. Sitters. Yeah. yeah, sitters and. Yeah, Ar- I can't believe Arteta missed all those chances. <laughs> Arteta should have subbed Arteta out sooner in the and first so, leg. And so, you know, going away to the East Block is is generally not a good idea for any team because yeah. just, we went up in that bastard we, like we owned. We have these lunatics that just you know they're outside your hotel with the flares yeah, and all that. Yeah, and then, yeah. and we've seen those awful photos on Instagram of their fans with the hard R yeah. written out for all to see and. And yet, all credit and, to and our the, squad. And the player that, that that was aimed against is Glenn Kamara, who was an Arsenal youth player as well. Yeah. So it even hit close to home yeah. there. He plays for Rangers now, I believe. But um, yep, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm glad we took and it, it to it them is, because it that's, is what they, that's what they deserve. Yeah. It is shocking that UEFA puts they want people to put on their jerseys, you know, and racism, kick racism out of football, and they gave that prick ten, 10 games. games. So yeah. so suspend people for ten games out of football yeah. is like fuck off, yeah. UEFA. Yeah, fuck the, off. The, the, Don't the, end the, racism. Just give just, people a light slap on the wrist. Just, like, please, they, just they should yank that guy's not license. to do racism yeah. anymore. They should yeah. yank that guy's license and say whatever yeah. the fuck you did, uh, well, whatever you used to do, like if you're a cab driver or you know, construction work or whatever, you're not playing football ever again. Yeah. Go you're back. Not you got to go back to doing that. Yeah, yeah. It's like you have, you have lost your license to football. You are no longer welcome. It's a privilege. Here. It's a privilege. Exactly. To do it for Absolutely. Exactly. Um, I'm, I'm trying to find it right now. There was an interesting uh, stat. I don't think, uh, I forget it was Fabrizio. Somebody had it where, what does Enzo Washington say in training day? He goes, fuck him and 10 just like him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, we know um, uh, my wife Lisa. For those of you who don't know her name, her name's Lisa. But uh, Lisa had never seen that movie, so we, oh, we wow. watched it the other night. Wow! And, and she was like, "I want to watch Training Day," and I was like, "I'm not sure if you're mentally prepared right now for Training Day. <laughs> we're gonna watch it, and then afterwards, I'm gonna ask you if you were mentally prepared." And she was like, "And so we watched the movie. She was she ended, and I was she was like, that was really good.' I said, "Yeah, but were you prepared?" And she was like, "Nope, it was intense." <laughs> that is a movie that if you can't quote that, we can't be friends. Yeah, absolutely. We had a new guy started my job a few months Y'all ago. Y'all go do this shit to me. Yeah, Jay. Yes. Jake, get back here. I need my money, Jake. And, I need and, my money, Jake. Give me my money. Because I'm going to get that gun, and I'm going to get that money. There's a there's a dude at my job that just started. His name is Jake, and everybody's like, Jake from State Farm, Jake from State Farm. And I was like, no, when I see him, and I was like, Jake, I need my money, Jake. Mm-hmm. I need my money. I need my money, Jake. Just give me the money. I'm going to put cases on all you mm-hmm. bitches. I'm putting cases on all you bitches. Y'all going to be playing basketball and Pelican, Pelican. Bay the way when I goes, get through with you. He goes, Pelican, Pelican Bay. And the way he had the slob hand yeah, out of his mouth. Yeah. Anyway, well, I appreciate y'all vamping while I look this up. But <laughs> this is this no is the number ten. The number of games Slavia Prague's uh, Andre Kudela, however you say it, is banned for uh, racist behavior. Twelve. The number of games Atletico Madrid's Kieran Trippier was suspended for telling a close friend he was moving to Spain, breaching betting guidelines. Mm. Uh, what did he get? Three. No, he got oh, twelve. He, he, he got, got twelve. 12. But the point is, he got, he got more. He got twelve. He got, he got more, more for telling a close friend right, he was moving right. to Spain than, than a guy gets for being racist. For saying what he did. Well, that, yeah. yeah, that just shows where the priority is. You, yeah. Fuck, yeah. you fuck with the money. You fuck with the you, money. You get, a harsher, you get a harsher sentence. Yeah. And that's, you know, you know, you can have all the, you can kneel before every game. You can have, like you say, the armband and stuff. But when the official governing body pulls crap like that, yeah. it rings pretty damn hollow. And again, the entire Slavia Prague team did not kneel. Right, and the, there's a there's an image, and I'm sure it's probably all over the internet of of the the camera is to the Slavia Prague players' backs, oh, and, and right in the middle yeah. is Lacazette just looking at all of them, like just looking like he's ready to do it to him, and he did. He scored yeah. twice today. Yeah, and, yeah and I mean, generally he, excellent. And he, you know, it, it, right now, yes, our leading our man in the match poll. But I mean, you could make a, a strong argument strong. for any of the forwards, yeah. yep. and Sabios, Sabios, and even Jaka, even Jaka filling in at left back. No one know, was poor was today. No, yeah. no one we could look at and go, "Ooh, he did." Ooh, he you know, Chambers poor. had that rough start, but then he immediately turned it on right, and had right. a lot and, of. And he was play. Very, very involved in the attack, which he yes. usually is. Let me let me tell you something. That is a ball crossing fool right there. He can cross a ball. It's an immediate upgrade on Hector Bellerin in that facet in the game in the final third. That kid can cross a ball, man. Yeah, he. Uh, Obviously, having that uh, Southampton uh, education, I remember once or twice. It's one, it's one of the best academies around, supposedly. Yeah, I mean, Christ, if you look at it, uh, you know, Gareth Bale Gareth came Bale, out of yeah. there. And then, um, so anyway, uh, where I'm going with that is I remember at least once he played holding mid for us. And I think he, he won the ball, he tackled somebody, won the ball, and went forward, beat two or three people. Yeah. And I was like, this kid has all kinds of things He's that we skills. don't know about right. because it's just kind of like, well, you know, play right back and just 
you know, stay in your lane. Yeah. But I mean, hell, he's he got won, a skill set that, and he won Player of the Year for Fulham. For Fulham, right. so everyone's and, like, oh, but they were terrible and they got relegated. But but you don't oh, get Player of the Year being yeah. terrible. There yeah. are a lot of relegated teams that have a really good player. Look at Emmy Buendia for for Norwich. Yep. Yeah. he's been good ever since he was in the league, and he's proven he proven himself in the league. And I know Tom, you don't believe in this statistic, but if you look at chance creation, he was up there for the year that they were in the league. He was up in like the top maybe yeah. five. Well, three, and you know, three to five. being the best player by a mile on a bad team, yeah. you're, still you're still the still best player, player by a mile. Right. You're still a you good know, player. It's like it's like these guys that you know. And he played that season at, at at DMF as well at holding midfield. Yeah, no, it's it's like you know, guys that think that like you know, oh, I can ball, I can take the worst NBA player. No, you can't. Mm-mm. The worst NBA player is a thousand times better than mm-hmm. any. He's going to beat you twenty to nothing. Yeah, when you say twenty. Just down my brain went DMF. What you mother want? <laughs> what you mother want? RIP DMF. RIP DMF. What you bitches want? Yeah. So, yeah, I mean. <laughs> in any case, yeah, I mean, there, there, there's definitely. Stop. Drop. Shut, shut them down, down. Open up shop. Oh, no. That's this is my radio ball. ball. <laughs> This is negative football. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Eight <laughs> players in front of the goal. Two players on the other side. I hope it like just should be stop, drop, pass it back, then set up shop. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Spe- no. Speaking of that, that's I a was, Mourinho roll. I was I was impressed. <laughs> Xhaka, he had a handful of chances today when, when he was at left back. He hoofed it right down the line, just yeah. perfectly yeah. the way Kieran Tierney or all your top level yep, yep. left backs do. Is just and to Pepe who was over there, or Saka who was over there, right. or ESR, or even Ceballos. So I, I thought Ceballos was excellent today. Well, and yeah. I, I've been known to shit on Ceballos. Oh yeah, but but and, and I, thought he was of, and I think a lot of Arsenal fans are uh, have written him off. I think uh, James Gunnerblog Arscast said it best the other day that I'm, I'm not gonna get myself fooled again because. He bought into him, and then we see what he is, and it's like it's like this. It's almost like a toxic relationship. <laughs> and well, because the restarts about the project restarts about us was balling the whole mm-hmm. time, right? And he was he was so good. He's being uh, and he was, he was really looking like a good uh, like an eight, like a converted yeah. eight. He you know still I mean? he still too he takes too many touches for my liking. He yeah. does. He does three touch to bios is what I'm calling. It. It's like he's three <laughs> touch. Um, yeah. What's that ACDC song? Touch too much. Yeah. That, that touch is, yeah. too much. <laughs> touch too much. <laughs> yeah. That's. You mean back in black 12.0? <laughs> well, that one's on uh, Highway to Hell. I know, but all their songs. All their songs the are basically back in black. I, that doesn't mean I don't like them because I do. But, all but their they're songs all basically back in black. Yeah. yeah. But um, yeah, I'm you know, smash like, this glass. I'm, I love ACDC, man. I don't hate them. I'm, uh, they're just not the most listen. Diverse I, I could catalog. go. I could right. go right now. You give me an hour. I could go right now and produce you a song that you would swear was ACDC. Well, yeah. I mean, they, it's <laughs> you would they, swear it was. They and the Ramones just had that classic sound. I mean. The accusation them and bad religion people was like, well, all the songs sound the same. Like, yeah, well, they fucking fill stadiums with two hundred thousand yeah, people. I, yeah. I didn't, I didn't say they, oh, they weren't not, good because no, they right. are, and it's I do just, like them. It's just a funny happenstance yeah, that all their yeah. sounds sound the same, like but, like Nickelback. But at least ACDC are good, good, right? Yeah. Yeah. I remember is, watching this video of Nickelback. There was like it was like ten Nickelback songs spliced on top of each yes. other, <laughs> and it sounded like one cohesive right. song. <laughs> yeah, like just like the, I'm like, like the pace of it and the yeah. um, the phrasing. Yeah, yeah, and the chord progressions, the whole nine yards, same thing. Yeah, because even with ACDC. I mean, you got songs like Let There Be Rock that are just so fast that even like the, the hardest spike haired mohawk wearing punks in the 70s were like, we're down with ACDC. ACDC and Motorhead, those two bands that it was, it was cool for punks to like, whereas bands like uh, Metallica were so like, ah, we're not sure about them, you know? Mm-hmm. Anyway, yeah. But to your point about, about Jaka, you know, moving it up the, the left side, I mean, when Tyranny went out, couple games ago like right. that immediately ceased yeah. and so right. having somebody you know figure that out and get back around to and that Jaka, I mean, there was that incredible stat uh, him against Sheffield United he had the most passes completed he was essentially doing at left back what Robertson does at Liverpool yeah yeah Robertson and, and um, Trent AAA for Liverpool controlled the game when, yeah. when they when they won a title when they won the Champions <clears throat> League those two out of the back just incredible precision passing and all that and and Jaka did the same thing and yeah. uh, I think what what might help Shaka and that is so when he's in the middle of the park uh, uh, the opposing team's players just naturally swarm him mm-hmm. and so when he's on the left side and a left back there's nothing coming from his left so right. so basically he doesn't even have to worry about what's coming from mm-hmm. that side and he can basically look at what's in front of him here and here and he doesn't have to worry about like here you know so and it's just kind of one of those things where where this guy, man, I, 
Again, I, I, I tell people all the time, man, if you don't understand what he brings to us, even in a, in a position that's not naturally his own, I thought he was absolutely excellent today. Well, and honestly, he's, he looked better at left back than he has in the midfield the last couple of games. I mean, he's not been bad the last couple of games. No, he, you know? I thought he was stellar today. But he was he's absolutely, been good, yes. You yeah. know, six, seven out of ten. Yeah. But today I thought he was like an 8.5 yeah, exactly. maybe out of ten. He had a maybe lot of great combination play today. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Parte, but, Parte, Pepe, and Saka. Wow. Yeah. A lot of flicks and quick. Just but, uh, Thomas was good. Was very good today. It was, this is one of his better It reminded games me of us. vintage Wenger era, just beautiful Arsenal football yep. that. Yeah, Combination sure. play, link yeah, ups. Yeah, like certainly other teams have, have beaten yeah. us and, and whatever. You know, Mourinho the other day, he had the obnoxious comment about Guardiola because he's like, well, Guardiola is the only one that can say anything to me because he's the only one that's won as many titles as me because I've got two Champions Leagues and yeah. all this other stuff. And I'm going. All right, you've got these accolades, but you play negative football and you're almost universally reviled. And and you're well, also after after about three and a half years, you are run out of town wherever you yeah, go. Yeah, you're reviled right. by your own right. club. Yeah, after yeah. That. eventually, after that, yeah. and yeah. quickly. Yes, like it doesn't take long. And and probably the fact is that Tottenham don't want to let go of him because like they're looking around going like, well, who can we get? Well, Tottenham don't want to let go of him. He's going to pay him a shit ton of money if they let him go. Yeah. That's the issue. And then we look and at it. You know, he's on a mad wage. Oh yeah. Yeah. Right. And there's no, and there's no out clause. There's no buyouts. It's like, it's, it's pay me my money. Yeah. So anyway, I, I just, I love today for a lot of reasons. One of them was, I saw that beautiful Arsenal football right. that I haven't seen in a while. Um, I, I know there was a lot of talk on uh, Facebook and Twitter and Instagram comments about, whether or not our, I mean, a lot of people, if today, if, if we had lost today, I think a lot of people would have been really, really heavily emphasizing Arteta out. Or calling for his yeah, job. Yeah, incorrectly. And but, it wasn't going to happen, but yeah. But that, that, that storm was rising and, if we lost and, today. But not only did we win, and I, I don't want to, um, fuck it, I'm going to paraphrase Jock Steen, but when, when, when Celtic beat Inter Milan in 1967, he said it wasn't just winning it was how we won. Right. Yeah. Beautiful, free-flowing football. Yeah. yeah. And my favorite part of that whole quote, he says, there wasn't a negative thought in our heads. Yeah. Yeah. And today was, I look at our squad, and there was not a negative thought in our heads. We just had such great combination play. Just, it was, it's it's almost like when you're eating a, a, a beautiful plate of food, and, and you just, you want to enjoy it, but there's almost like a little bit of sadness because you know it's going it's to be over eventually. It's going to come yeah. to an end. <laughs> it's going to come to an end. And, and then so I like, felt the other night, uh, um, uh, what's the day, Thursday on Tuesday night, uh, Lisa and I went to Shag Bark and let Libby Mill. Yeah. So I, I didn't want it to end. Yeah. yeah until you saw that best, picture in the uh, group chat. Yeah, yeah. And then it was a little awkward. Yeah, seriously. But uh, best, uh, best shrimp and grits I think I've ever had. Okay. And but, I'm a big fan of juleps right up their way. And... Uh, um, down I guess down there. the bottom. I guess yeah, it's bottom. Oh uh, no, it's not the, really the bottom. It's more like uh, I don't know what you call that area. It's like near where the convention center is. Oh, see, more I like thought you meant Jules. I thought Jules. I thought Jules was on east 18th. of Jackson Ward. Okay, I yeah. thought I thought uh, Jules was on. No, it's right across the way. It's right next to Juan Gonzalez, and right across the way from oh, okay. uh, Secret Sandwich Society. And, oh, and okay. Pearlies yeah. is near there as well. Right. Yeah. Okay. So I guess. How, what do you call that area? Uh, that's Jackson Ward. It's, Jackson Ward. Well, it's east of Jackson yeah. Ward. It's 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 not here's Jackson where, we, where we lose everyone. That's yeah, not yeah, yeah, it's, it's okay, Navy yeah, Hill, right? Which, yeah, yeah. I think Navy Hill would be oh. the best. I think that's be where the best. It is, uh, yeah. I know what you're saying because I go the Coliseum District yeah. uh, Convention Center. Is it Monroe Ward? Mm -mm. No, that's Monroe Ward is where like uh, where like uh, Linden in. That's Monroe Ward. Okay, that area. We sound like New Yorkers now. Oh, For those of you that don't have a map of Richmond, Virginia, in front of you, this is not going to make a whole lot of sense. Um, but you know, a bunch of ADD motherfuckers. Yeah, exactly. we are a little over the place today because it was it was let's, a good day. Let's but let's leave it to Ryan to bring us back to where well, right. he does a good job at that. I'm going to attempt to transition as we talk about a delicious balanced meal. We had a very balanced attack, and just our play was balanced. And I think that's where kind of where I was going it's with like an the left side. Segue, Ryan. It was terrible, <laughs> but with more motion up the left again and with Chambers bringing up the right really aggressively. Yeah. You know, the, the last few weeks has felt like one side or the other has been kind of falling off and so mm -hmm. teams can overload the other sure. side and just stifle us. Well, when, when Tierney uh, got injured right. against Liverpool, that was when teams started stifling on the right-hand side. Right, because they know. knew the guy on the left wasn't going yeah, to be knew, able to. They knew yeah. our left back wasn't, uh, it was Cedric at that game and they right. knew that they could uh, kind of overpower him or, or outpace him on that side, but Today, it was one of those things where I felt that we were, you're right, I felt that we were really balanced. And again, I thought Shaka did such a good job 
at left back of doing everything you wanted him to do, the defensive side of the ball and the attacking side of the ball. And he was just like, listen, I'm just going to dispossess and I'm going to get it to Ceballos or Pepe or, you know, or Saka or somebody that can do better things with the ball than I can yeah. in attacking areas. And he did such a good job of that today. I thought the p- positional discipline from him in that position today was for a guy that's not that natural, not a, a natural in that position, I thought was, was really excellent. Yeah, and, you know, once he got it to those guys, all of the, the, the forward players, I mean, Lacazette, Pepe, Smith Rowe, Saka, Martinelli, when he came on, they all put in just incredible individual efforts Absolutely. to take down two, three, and four guys at once. Absolutely. Like every single one of them had at least one or two moments in the goals, game. Goals where in they the ran field. past the universe. Yeah. Yeah. Where they just destroyed everybody and yeah. left a bunch of dudes just crying on the floor. Yeah. And, you know, there have been moments where, like, one player has it going like that uh-huh. in a game, but then we, then we can't get him the ball yeah. or he gets subbed off or whatever. Yep. But in this game, there were just everybody was going full speed and just dialed in, and we yeah. haven't seen that in a long time. Yeah. I think my only problem with the game is I wish we would have battered him 8-0. Yeah. Seven, <laughs> seven, so I, wanted, I wanted to just really take it to him, and I think we – it was a it was a blowout, but I wanted to see it, six, it reminded six or me, seven. It reminded me that, and I mentioned it at halftime. It reminded me of that United game where we had the three nil at halftime, and then I was hoping we would get you know six nil or something. Yeah, cause, just, cause they, a, just to embarrass cause, them because they lore that eight to two over us all yeah, absolutely, the time. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, I point out like I mean, that game I, happened a fucking decade ago, and they still yes, wore that game. Over and, us. and I was sitting, you know, ten feet from here. And I mean, I had to Google who the players were. Francis Coquelin came in. I forgot what jersey number he, he was wearing. Thirty nine, I believe, at that point. Okay, and uh, Ox Ox. That was Ox first game for the right. club. He's, so, he's since come. He's come and gone, or he's gone since then. But um, uh, Van Persie played that game. He scored. Did he score both of our goals that game? He might. Have. I want to say he did. He might. I I, uh, um, I try to uh, erase that from my memory. God, and that was when Ashley Young. I think it just it was a freshly signed Man United player. So he scored yeah, two free kicks against us that game. Rudy can think had a hat trick. It's just it was bad news. So we we improved on on the three 0 but I was like, man, just you know, one or absolutely, yeah, yes, because mm-hmm. because again, you know, maybe I'm. You want to take and put him to the sword. You want to be yeah, absolutely right. ruthless, no respect. Yeah. Just yeah, uh, it just we're not going to do our bad. I, I, I hope I hope like we did I, last I, <laughs> I could. We yeah. all did about four out of ten, respect. but they were oh. all they were all bad. Oh. Um, but you There's know, no respect. To your point about the second half, you know, I did it anyway. That's fair. Um, when Prague makes a bunch of changes at the half, I'm going, eh, well, what's it going to matter? But then yeah. they, 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 and this is what I was, I don't want to say afraid of, but expecting is that we started to just play the game out at, at, at the jump of the second yeah, half. Right. And, you know, 3 0 is a, it's a pretty good lead. It's a comfortable lead. I, I mean, 2 0, you, you, you definitely be a little more worried. But yeah. even so, it's just, you know, you, the way they were playing to start the second half was yeah. they had the impetus. We did not. We were kind of chasing them around. And if yeah. they had gotten one in the first 10 minutes of that half, it, I would have yeah, started to be like, you know what? Here we on. go. It would have been game on. Yeah. You know, and so, like, I know it's hard after you have, I mean, the first half was just so stellar in every aspect. Yeah, it's it hard was, to, like, maintain that after you take a break. And it, also, the weather, you yeah. go in, you sit down, you warm up, you dry off, and all of a sudden it's hard to come back out with that same fire yeah. again. But did it, Leno it, have to make a save tonight? I know there I were a handful of times. Sure. He made a couple of attempts. I think there was a couple that went like just over the bar. Right, because I'm visualizing to. him, you know, with his hand. Yeah, I don't think he might not have. No, they they had no shot. They, there was no shots on target when they showed that stat that we were we had five nice. on target and they had none. Nice. So I mean, five on target and four goals. That's that's shooting efficiency. Well, and I, that, that that other one that Lacazette, might be that maybe. I, I wonder if the fifth one is the is the one that was disallowed. It's, it's, yeah, disallowed. So well, there you go. actually, if it was disallowed, they wouldn't have counted. They wouldn't that have counted a shot. shot either. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, Saka had one save. That's what it was. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, 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 I'm, it, it, we got it back together. But there was like, for me, there's like 10, 15 nervy minutes to start the second half. Or, going, or All Martinelli, right. Martinelli shot wide after that amazing run. Oh right. yeah, 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 that he, was it. But yeah, I mean, it, once we finally got to like bringing the subs on, like on the first sub in the 60, 67th minute, you go, okay, now we can kind of play it out. We've gotten past that initial, initial barrage in yeah. the second half, and now it's like, all right, let's hold it down. But then, you know, Martinelli comes on, and he almost makes an incredible individual effort oh, for a goal. What a run that was. Holy hell. And, you know, again, like I said earlier, it was garbage time. But <laughs> he, was, he was due for his monthly screamer. Yeah. yeah. No kidding. That thing that, you know, he launches it from 30 meters that leaves the onion bag bulging. Yeah. Just, yeah. When this kid comes on, it's just an immediate injection of, of a, just a crazy amount of energy. 
and he and 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 the other players just feed off of it. Yeah, and like it's like, like an energy oh, no, source. No. Arsenal, <laughs> El Nini plays for Arsenal. Yeah, yeah, but that is that best uh, Egyptian in the league, Mo, and, Mo El Nini. <laughs> but no, you're right. He and doesn't like, have to that's die been for my argument goals. the whole time for why doesn't he start? I mean, obviously today we had the energy in the first half anyway. Yeah, it ended yeah. up being fine. But you go like, here's another chance where he could have come out and you know had us just busting down the rails, which like I said, we did anyway. But you just I'm very much looking forward to what he can bring over now. Ninety minutes because I'm looking forward to what he brings in minute one, and I'm looking forward to what he brings in minute ninety. And he's going to give you that same level of energy, and stamina, and determination, and grit the entire game. Well, that's 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 an interesting point, and that's something that I wanted to talk about this week. Is I mean, we know that Arteta's mo has been you play well, you keep playing, and that's why right. he hasn't been getting on as much. So, what needs to like what do we do in the transfer window? Like I, I would, I would assume the goal is for Martinelli to play more. Mm-hmm. I mean, he, he, the talent is obviously there. The upside is obviously there. Like, do we make moves to address our roster in ways that gives him a clearer path to the pitch? So I, I think we will. So, two things, or a, a, a number, a, a few things here. So, I think there's a good chance that Lacazette might leave mm-hmm. in the summer, and so. There's going to be a knock-on effect from that for a couple of our players, um, Eddie and Katia, Fowler and Balogun, and Martinelli and Aubameyang. So I think that there's going to be a knock-on effect for those players, right? So if Lacazette leaves, that means most of the time when Aubameyang is playing next season, I think he'll be playing centrally, mm-hmm. which opens up a bit of a spot on the left-hand side. So I believe um, Lacazette might leave. Aubameyang will play centrally. I think also um, Eddie Nketiah will probably get sold. That was going to be think, my question: Is do I, I we think, sell him? Yeah, I and think let signing, Martinelli fill that space. I think sign, signing Fowler and Balogun to a new, I think, four-year contract. Mm-hmm. I think that spells the end for Eddie, for Eddie at Arsenal. Yeah, and Eddie is a likable guy and a likable player because of the effort he gives you, but. It's easy to, to make the argument that he's not quite an Arsenal player, whereas and and it's easy well, to the, the argument that, is not, that yeah, like we that know what has, has a yeah, m- has much a higher ceiling. considerably higher upside, right? Right. So so, Aubameyang up uh, at center forward striker with uh, Fowler and Balogun as a backup with significantly more playing time next year, a better shirt number. It's gonna be like Saka all over again. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, he's gonna get a shirt number that is indicative of his place in the squad. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I think uh, I think it's you know I think maybe Thomas Party moves to the number five shirt because we knew he likes that shirt, and maybe Balogun moves to like the, the eighteen 18, shirt, yeah. which is means that that you're gonna play yeah. if you if you have that that shirt yeah. number. Um, then okay, so Alba going central leaves a spot on the left hand side. Now Saka will occupy that sometimes, but also Saka and Pepe kind kind of go back and forth and rotate in and out on the right. So I think Martinelli will get a lot of playing time on the right. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, on the With left the next year. As well as some playing time in the center, because Martinelli is one of those players that can play across the front three. Sure, sure. He can play. He could be a center forward, and he's got the the strength and physical stature to be able to do that. But he's also got the speed and the dribbling ability, and the and the the winger assets that you look for in, right. in, in your wingers or your wide players. And that's that's kind of where I was going. Mm-hmm. I think we need to. We need. They both need to go. Yeah. In order I, I to think, keep. I think Lacazette to, is going. Lacazette's and I think, gonna go, and I and think we've, we've got to sell Eddie in yeah. order to get Martinelli on. Yeah. More and, and, and Balogun on. We will more. Have absolutely in order for because there, there, there are a lot of clubs after Balogun that wanted that we're going to give him playing time, and he, he I think he's always maintained that that PT was the issue for him. He wanted time absolutely. on the pitch, and so I, I think we will have made him some significant assurances to get him to sign yeah. this contract that he's going to play a lot of minutes next year. Gonna, kind of kind of what what Saka did for us last yeah. year. I think. Balogun is going to play those types of minutes. Sure. Um, a significant, I mean, it's going to be a significant increase. And he will have gotten a big bump in salary, of course. Right. Um, you know, maybe not 50, 60K, but, you know, can you imagine what he was on before? Maybe yeah, right. 7,500 yeah. a week, maybe. Yeah. He'll probably be on 20,000, 25,000 a week, something right. like that. And he's going to get a significant amount of playing time. And then we'll see. Um, and, and hopefully. He will get another contract before that four years runs out because that means he's doing better and is and has become one of our crucial players. Right, you know right. what I mean? So I, I think I think the knock on effect is Nketia or Lacazette and Nketia go and the knock on effect for Aubameyang and for Martinelli yeah. and Balogun. Now then, do the do we get enough out of those guys to to not buy a forward? To to yes, to not buy a forward and also do we get enough money back that we can get Odegaard in? Hmm. 
Okay, so... And there's also been. Like, I, been I, I, I don't think we need to buy a forward. Like, I, I, my whole goal is to see those the young guys play more. I don't think yeah. we need more guys at forward if we there's, do that. There's rumors about uh, Edward from uh, Celtic. Celtic. Celtic, yeah, uh, and he's, Celtic. A hell, he's a hell of a player, also. To to our discussion offline though, like Celtic are probably not going to let us have one over on him again <laughs> after, after the, we, tyranny. the tyranny situation. They are going to be very unwilling to deal with us. I think. Um, and Leicester apparently is the other team in the running, but. Lester has Brandon Mott. They're pissed off at Rogers, yeah. Right. Yeah. He, he, ditched he left him in, in mid season, yeah, right? Yeah. So um um I say Obama Yang to Real Madrid for Rafael Varon. <laughs> uh, Varon's Varon's going to Man United, man. Ugh. And that and that's that's bad news for us because yeah. <laughs> if there's one center back that I've coveted for the last eight it's years, Rafael it's been Varon since he was nineteen. Ap- apart from V V D. Yeah. And, and, yeah, and yeah, we yeah. had our chances at V V D. And V V D V V D like kind of Came on and, and proved himself to be one of the best out there very very quickly. Oh, yeah. Varane, I think, has been he he was he was kind of unrealized potential. Call it seven years ago, and he's gotten better and better and better every year. Mm. I I don't even I don't understand why Real Madrid <laughs> I, I, if they're not trying to keep it because they have cause, a wealth of options because Real be, Madrid because yeah. I think he's going to be moving on on a Bosman. I think he's, his contract is running out, That's crazy. which is insane to me. A yeah. player <clears> that good. I because I, uh, I think one of my few gripes about Arteta has been we don't know what back four we're going to get game in game out, and we still need a right footed center back. And, yeah. uh, and who knows? Is, is it Saliba or is it? And we don't know. A Veron or a big and, name? And, or are we going to do a madness this summer? And, and Saliba might be so bitter that he's just like, I don't want to come back. Almost like I Luka, mean, he's, he's contracted to yeah, us. Yeah, I so. mean, but, unless he's going to... But say like Lucas Herrera, who this week has said, like, I want to go to Boca Juniors. That is what I want to do. Well, he, he hasn't... Pro- and I, I really liked Herrera as a player, but he hasn't proven himself so useful for us where we would automatically deny that request. But I'm just saying players requesting where they want to go. I mean, Saliba might be bitter because he... He hasn't been... I, I mean, he might be, but also, like, he's been here a year. Yeah. You know, like, it's... It was handled poorly. I mean, he it was handled really very poorly. Year. But like, how do you get so? I mean, I guess like, what did he do to deserve this? Yeah, I mean, and maybe it's something that we'll never know about. And that's right. that's kept hush hush by the club because we know there's a lot shop. of those situations with. Who's a pet shop boys fan that knows the song? What have I done to deserve this? <laughs> but but yeah, I mean, it, it, it's hard to imagine him not being the solution, or at least being in the mix for yeah. being the solution. I mean, I think, and he's and he's balling at Nice right now. Yeah. So uh, yeah, so yeah, yeah just, he has this crazy record. And he's a, a year older. He'll come back. He'll be 21, 20 or twenty one, and so you know he'll get that extra year of maturity playing in, in a really good league. A lot of people say the French league is not good, but I I I, I disagree. Well, shit, how many? P- players, PSG how, might win the Champions League this but, year. Uh, but also look at how many players we've plucked out of the champ- out of the sorry the, the French league. Yeah, that is. Yeah. Uh, there was there was a time where three players, three Premier League players of the year in a row came from the French league. Right. And Hazard, uh, Conte. And Mares, all three came from the French league. And hell, that, there was a guy that we played still for West Ham. That was, there was a guy that was so good for Pyatt, West Ham, Pyatt. and he went back. He went back. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, I mean, you look at uh, Nazri came from the. Remember how good he was for us? Mm. Um, yeah. Just the French league has had a lot of talent, and not just at PSG and Olympic. uh, Olympic Lyonnais and and and, and Marseille, and right. not just those clubs. Uh, Conte and Mares, did both those guys come from La Havre? Koscielny came from Lorient. Uh, Giroud came from Montpellier. I mean, some of those, yeah. some of the mid table, you know. We what got I mean? Shemak yeah. from uh, from Bordeaux. Yeah, and he's Girondin de Bordeaux. Yeah, and I, I want mean, some red wine to bust out some to bust out some French. Not here, you don't. <laughs> um, yeah, but that and that's just this you know, is a wine free podcast, <laughs> sir. This certainly is. Um, I need so a beer. yeah, like back. that Robert that, Perez. Um, yeah, I mean it, it's. Because I'll, I'll never forget, I forget what newspaper it was, but they put up a headline that said, when, uh, when, Ar- when France won the World Cup in 1998, the headline was, Arsenal win the World Cup. <laughs> because it was so many of our players. Yeah. Um, well, and that, that, was, that was, I mean, the Wenger connection, so. Yeah. You know. and, and, and that's, it's kind of a shame because we used to have the French League on lock. Yeah. And then now Man City and Chelsea just... It's almost like they, they, they use the free rider concept from economics to just look at who we're scouting out, and they go, hey, we're just going to nab this player and offer more money. Yeah, well, and the, the, they, they're in a position to do that, and they can, so they do. I mean, that, the, I, I think that speaks less to us and more to just the ridiculous coffers that they right. come with. I just and, don't understand you know. when... I just don't understand... 
if somebody is 25 years old and say, I'm a Chelsea fan, or say, for instance, like what happened to me at work yesterday. Oh, yeah. I, I have an Arsenal scarf in my cube, and then uh, this photographer for a newspaper comes past, sees my scarf, and goes, Hey, man, is that an Arsenal scarf? Yeah, man, well, I'm a Man United. Oh, wait. I mean, uh, Man City. Man, I'm a yes. Man City. Man City for life. Then he walks that away. That means you're a fan of neither one. And, yeah. you're, and, then, and then I had to look at my boss and go, all I can, I mean, my boss is looking at me, and I'm not going to go, I'm going to spark this motherfucker out. <laughs> and I'm just like, oh, that's a shame. And then, you know, I, I, it, it just, if you, you are, if you are American and you are a fan of Chelsea or Man City, like, there's no reason to be a Chelsea fan at all, <laughs> other than you're plastic. And I, I met somebody last week and I said he was a, a, a Man City fan. I said, there's only three reasons to be a fucking Man City fan. Johnny Marr. Noel Gallagher, Liam Gallagher, and I don't give a fuck about whatever your reason is after that. And he's like, well, you know, when I was a kid, I played for a team that Man City, and I'm just like, I, I'm tuning out. I'm, I'm, there's we're no, done here. Yeah, yeah, there's no, there's no, there's no merit behind what you have to have to say. I, I have a question for you. Who's the best Man City player of all time? Of all time? Serge Aguero. I, I'm not even there's hesitating. A, there's a strong, there's yeah, a strong argument for that. Honestly, yeah. I, I think there's also a strong argument for David Silva. Well, and they're going to say Vince uh, and Company, Dennis Law, old school. Yeah, Dennis Law, old school. But the, Vin, Vinny Company, David Silva, Aguero. It's Aguero. I mean, they those, both, those 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 titles don't happen without all those all the people that right. we just mentioned. Besides Dennis Law, he's an old. But school Aguero player. does it in a Aguero does it in a more noticeable kind of you know flashy way. I think than those yeah, guys did. I, I think I, I always say that David Silva might be quietly the best city player ever. Uh, Vinny Company is, is is one of the best leaders I've ever seen, be it right. city or otherwise. And uh, but you know Aguero, there's a strong shout for him because he he might be the third best striker in the history of the Premier League. Yeah, behind Shearer or Henri and Shearer. Right. He and I mean, and the stats would back that up. Oh yeah. In fact, has he decided where he's going? Yeah, I don't, I don't think, think he's decided. decided. No. He's, 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 he's already come out and said he's leaving, but he hasn't decided where he's going. Because he yet. is. He's going to be quality no matter where he goes. Oh, sure. I, listen, I'll, t- I'll take him in Arsenal. Yeah, Are you I would. Me? I would. Yeah. I mean, we we went down this road already once. Because I mean, there's. I'm one of the ones that says that he refuses to learn English, but I'm like, he doesn't need to learn English. You yeah. just. I mean, give he, him he knows. The ball. I've seen him. I've seen him do any reason English. Yeah. He doesn't. He doesn't know as much English as uh, maybe David Silver or Cesc Fabregas, you know, or Hector Bellerin. Right. You know. But I'm going really But on that here. Amazon series, everyone else was speaking English, and then he was always not speaking. English. <laughs> and I'm going. He's Sergio Aguero. He doesn't have to. Yeah. yeah. His the only thing. The only English he has to learn. Fucking ball. That's the only English he has <laughs> right. to know. Yeah. I mean, hell, he was uh, engaged to Maradona. Uh, R.I.P. Diego Maradona. Yeah. R.I.P. Diego. He, he was uh, engaged to. He is a lethal ball player that any team, any league in the world is going to be better off with yeah. him on their team. Yeah. I, I, Even if you're Juventus and you got Dybala and Ronaldo, you add Aguero and he's going to improve your team. I imagine No team he, in the world will add Aguero and be I worse imagine off he goes that. to Italy. Yeah. I imagine he goes to Italy. He could, yeah, I think because I think he could go another five years in Italy. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like Tevez did. Tevez went to Juventus, did well there. All right, Ryan. What's next? Uh, well, I was just <laughs> Ryan, gonna, Ryan, just, bring us back. Bring just, us back. Just wrapping that up. I mean, because we talked about this. I can't remember if it was last podcast or the one before. Like, I think it was. You, I think it was the last one. one like, yeah. Would you have Aguero? And yeah. I like if we were if we were an Aguero away from winning Champions League or from winning the league, I'd be like, hell yes, get him in. But you know, given that we're still, you know, we have some well, scoring to goals do. is our biggest problem. Because we used to right have, now it is yeah. last year I mean, that's the defense true. was our biggest problem and and we, we solved that more, the, more or less solved yeah, that at the expense of our offense yeah now we need and but I think but see, I, I think don't the think it's our that lies in the midfield yeah I think it's I think it's our attacking midfield players and yeah. our and our creative midfield players that's why I think no, pro, priority number one this summer is for us to finagle our way into Odegaard just yeah. like we finagled our way into Aubameyang right. we might have to give up somebody we don't want to see given up but if it lands us Odegaard. I mean, if you if you if you, I'm look not at, sure there's any one player on our team that I wouldn't be willing to give up. Well, and there's to, enough guys to, that are, except you know, for maybe Bukayo Saka and yeah, Kieran Tierney, and I would say, and, and maybe maybe even Yisar, yeah, like sure. the kids you got to keep. But you know, if Bellerin goes, if Laka goes, if Eddie goes, and that builds builds the coffers. There's got to be enough, and you know, hell, if we win Europa. Yeah, there's prize your money, Champions League money. money. Sure, yeah. Well, and there's your Champions League money yeah. for next year. Yeah, but so both. So right. So prize money from winning the competition and money for being in the Champions, Champions League. League. Then, yeah. then we then there should be no financial reason we can't. Yeah. You know, then it's just does Madrid want to want to put us over a barrel? Yeah. 
Um, but but they might not want to because they're trying to fund a per- purchase for Erling Holland or that's true. Killing Mbappe. Yeah. So Mbappe, I think he's he's uh, no, it's Neymar who said he's going to stay at PSG. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think you're right. I think attacking mid is still. I mean, we we've, we've looked better with you know it was like Sabayos looked great at it today, mm-hmm. but he's he's hit or miss. Um, Odegaard he seems to be... He really be, wasn't even playing an attacking midfield position today. He just was all around good as a yeah, CM today, true. I thought. But he he, he, he can slot in there at sure, times yeah. and be effective, but not reliably enough for me. He I has think value he, as a squad player. If he, yeah. t- if he took one less dribble every time he touched the ball, man, right. he'd be a player. Three touch yeah. Danny. Yeah. But, you know, you get something like Odegaard is pretty reliably that guy. Absolutely. And he's already, you know, had a taste of being here. He seems to want to yeah. be here. Yeah. That to he, me. He reminds me a lot of David Silva, who I just talked about. Like, yeah. just play style. He just reminds me a lot. Just really silky on the ball. Not pacey, but extremely difficult to get off the ball. Just so yeah. difficult and can pick a through ball right. with the best of them out there. Yeah. And like, you know, I'm, I'm sure there will be other targets out there in the summer, but you know, God willing, no goddamn Kia Draption clients. Yeah, and yeah, we're not, so. dip, you know, we're not going, we're to, not Chelsea. going to Chelsea's bid. Right, Chelsea's like, ooh, we don't want Mateo hey, Kovacic Jorginho anymore. Jorginho is still here. Yeah, Are you no, guys interested this time? I don't want Chilwell. I don't want. I don't even know Danny Drinkwater's over there anymore. Uh, if we sign Danny Drinkwater, I'm gonna drive <laughs> my car off a bridge. Yeah, I was gonna say uh, I, I'm gonna run into the GRTC bus lane. <laughs> or, or no, I mean, no, yeah. there's no. It is. Uh, I hate that club. No, and that, and that's and that's that's just it. Is we have an avenue. Water so washed up. He's not white no more. He's just clear. <laughs> he's translucent. He's so washed up. And and we have we have a ready made. What seems to be a ready made avenue to not do that in Odegaard. So if we you know apparently if, he if said just, he wants to stay. Yeah, he wants to stay because he's going to be, gonna be yeah. the first name on the team sheet every. And he has right. such a high ceiling. Yeah, yes, yeah, such and, a high ceiling. And if he goes back to Madrid, it's, it's just. He's not displacing anybody. No, Madrid, you, Madrid is just Madrid is Madrid. They're always yeah. going to have too many midfielders and not know what to do with them. That's what they yeah. are. Can you imagine a young core? Martinelli, Saka, ESR, Odegaard, Tierney, a young core like right. that. Right, Saliba if he gets it together. Yeah, right. Saliba, Gabriel, just a really good young core now, and a young spine. I've been sitting on my next comment. For How old is Partey? He's like 25, right? Partey is t- uh, 27. Oh, he's a little older. Yeah. Right, because right, there was that whole thing, uh, Yankee Gunner. Um. Listen, he's 27 until he's 28. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, how how it works. Works. that's how it works. That's how it works. Because there was that whole thing with Yankee Gunner. I got into it a little bit with him on Mike Feinberg's uh, podcast in the comment section because some people want to buy players 24 and under so that there's a resale value mm-hmm. like they're always looking at the resale value and I said to him snarkly wait who, who is this you said to uh, at Yankee Gunner Elliot okay. whatever yeah. um, who wow yeah. who talks faster than uh, I don't know than even me so yeah. right so his whole thing was that we need resale value and I said we're, we're we are a football club not a business yeah so Partey coming at 27. We are won. both, though. <laughs> well, but we need to concentrate more on, yes, our, on and, our sporting and, and, achievements. Yeah. And, and in the, uh, if we're looking at the, uh, the, the food pyramid of selling clubs, we're, we're below people like Madrid, Man United, and all that. Yeah. You know, you, Even though those clubs sell players, but they are not selling but clubs. But look no further than, you know, Henri went to Barcelona, and, yeah. and uh, um, the Dutchman, whose name I won't mention, went to Man United. So, <laughs> so yeah, Partey at 27, I think it was a Edward good acquisition. Vanderson? And <laughs> so, Donny Van de Beek. We 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 buy players because they're good. I I. I all right. So we we need to keep. We need to. It's good to have an eye towards the future so the club can sustain. But we need to sign players that we believe are going to stay through their prime and help us win things. Right. So with that said, because I'm a massive fan of his, and he got man the match for West Brom this last week. Mainsley. Does Mainsley Jesus. have a place with us? Uh, uh, it's a squad place. It's never going to be a starting it's place. It's a squad place, and I mean, if, if it's even there, it will, it's a squad place. Because we have a youth movement now. Well, we have a youth movement, but we've already they're already here, and they're on the first team now, and not on loan at West Brom. Yeah. So for me, I would say no. You think I would Mainsley's say getting into central midfield over Thomas Party. No, obviously okay. not. But maybe over Ceballos. Eh. No, because he he his he, he he's not been as good going forward as Ceballos is. I mean, yeah. Ceballos with his extra touches can be problematic, but I think he still Mainsley was awesome. I, I still don't think Joe Willick is going to get in over. And I and I and I like Joe Willick. I'm not like Rob of the Oak who is going <laughs> to say that Joe Willick is trash. 
because he's absolutely not trash. But and he's actually been balling out for Newcastle. To be fair to him, that, um, ben, that bending shot he had against scene. Liverpool yeah. in the uh, the the two Bob Cup, yep. yeah, the two Bob Cup. Um, you know, it's just I, I think the youth that are in the team right now and not on loan and getting significant minutes, there's a reason that those youths right. are in the team, not on loan and getting significant minutes and in like, the team right now. You know, you need depth and you need guys, you know, for to deal with injuries and that sort of thing. But I, I we can't we can't just sell everybody and just have our, our starting eleven and like four backups. Like obviously right. we gotta keep some of these dudes around. But and and I think I think Mainsley and Willick and those guys are good squad players. I think El Nini's a good squad player. I think and I mentioned this last time. I think Rob Holding is a good squad player. Rob, you're not going to win a title with Rob Holding as your starting center back, right. but Rob Holding can be to us what John O'Shea and Wes Brown and those guys were for May, the, that May United team that that won you know yeah. four four titles in seven years or whatever. Won a treble. You know what I mean? Won a treble. Won a treble. So the so and you need squad players and 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 you know. Hold it, I'm not holding, but uh, Willick and, and Ketia can be like our version of like guys like Ji Sung Park and you know what I mean, and Darren Fletcher and those guys that that really that that weren't really starters, but they came in and did a job and did it really well because they knew what the hell they were doing, you know. And, and every championship team needs those players, role players, yeah, yeah. role players. Man City this year needed Ilkay Gundogan. They yeah. needed him. Yeah. yeah, they wouldn't be title winners without him. But he's not. Re- he's not a starter for that team, really. He he played well and started some games for them. But if you look at if they're three in midfield, if you looked at starters for all, you know, I would say it's probably Foden, De Bruyne, and Fernandinho when yeah. when the team is entirely healthy, or or uh, Rodri instead of Fernandinho. If yeah. Fernandinho is playing center back, so like every team needs those those squad players, and they need to be like. Decent, but how many? Parchi the, the, Sung the, scored against Arsenal every single time he played us. The question yeah. is, how many do you need? I guess, and you know, it, I think it, you need two. I think you need your Carrick, and I think you need your your Fletcher. <laughs> yeah. So, like of those guys, I mean, if, <laughs> we, whatever, if we consider, you know? if we say El Nenny is one of those guys, and yeah. I think he is, and yeah. Sabios honestly is another one of those guys. So, so, so Sabios, he played well today, but on his overall performances, I could take him or leave him. If he goes back to Madrid, I'm not, I'm not upset with that. Well, and that's if we, thing. if we land Odegaard, I want to yeah. keep Granit Xhaka and Thomas Party as our starting two deep in deep midfield, and then you know, it could be, it could be Mohamed El Nenny, it could be Joe Willock. Yeah. Uh, it could be Mainsley and, and Mainsley's value Part of Mainsley's value Lies in his versatility Yeah Because he can play About six different positions But he's not He's Well I guess He doesn't do any of them On an elite level Yeah But he's, but he does he's all serviceable He's good. serviceable Yes Yeah So I guess that, that That is an argument To keep him over, Part of his value Yeah Over say uh, El Nenny Or Sabi- I, I keep forgetting That Ceballos is still alone At this point Yeah So he may be and, going away anyway And, and also Another word on El Nini. El Nini is the only player at the club that's a natural defensive midfielder. Mm. Uh, we have to have one. <laughs> uh, we have to have one who is, who is somewhat disciplined in that. In right, because it seems like all of our other defensive midfielders... We don't have any other defensive they, midfielders. They think of themselves yeah. as something else. Yeah. That's because they are something else. Yeah. We have one defensive midfielder <laughs> on the team, and his name is Mohamed El Nini. I, I'm just there are no fi- other players that are defensive I just want to finish off the Mainsley thing. I think Mainsley is extremely athletic and, and, pro- sure, and, and, and proved his worth... Effectively shut down Mohamed Salah. Yeah, he uh. is. He can he can body people, and, and he got himself some England games. True. I, I I mean, yeah, he fancies himself. You know, he's, he's box to box at the baggies, and he and he wants to play DM. But if we're if we're in a cup final, I would prefer him to be a shut down left back or shut down right back, mm. almost like Emmanuel Obue, where you go. I would prefer Kieran Tierney at left back. On well, yes. well, <laughs> but I'm saying like if the need is there, yeah. if the need is there, sure, that, he can come in and do a job. But he, like I said, he does a lot of things good. He is not a lead in any one thing or any one position. So I guess what it comes and, down and, and to, that, and, and that's not a knock on him. That is value because right. not everybody can play five yeah. or six different positions. Yeah. yeah, that's part of his value is is his versatility. A big chunk of his value is his versatility. And if we and if we if we get into the final, and we're on penalties, I mean any cup final, we're on penalties. Oh, you yeah, mainly for the penalties, oh, absolutely. The bird catcher. Yeah, yeah, just walking up there because like this is going as on. much as I love as much as I love Obama Young, he. Every time he steps up to, to the penalty he's spot, over, you can tell he's I'm overthinking worried it. because that penalty that he took against Spurs. Two, well, like you can you can kind of see it. Listen, everybody misses penalties. Mainly's going to miss one too. I mean, yes, but but, but Obama Youngs was bad. 
uh, all but to it, me, it, it was. But I'm not gonna say he's a shit penalty. No, taker, he's not a shit that's, penalty. That's just not the truth. But he looks. You like think he's, about this one. You think about this one moment when he takes a penalty, I, and I get it because I, I think about that moment too. I think, but, but I, I think, think about that moment, and then he usually makes the penalty. He and I'm usually like, oh, makes I'm it, overthinking it. But he he looks like he's right in his own head when he's. I don't give a shit what he looks like. As long as he makes the penalty, but that's the he's thing. missed but one. That, but he's that's missed one. No, he's missed more than that. I mean, well, he's missed I mean, one. That, that, that was important. A, but that yeah. was a monument. That that, that, that like, was our, important our season that effectively collapsed. Yeah, basically, I think <laughs> I, I want him taking penalties maybe second after Lacazette. Uh, Lacazette like 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 yeah. is is a lot. He's for, automatic. For, yeah. Yeah, he's, he's automatic from the. He's the kind of guy like when I see him. Pepe is quite good at penalties as well. And I wish because it's kind of a shame because when they both play, they always defer. To Obama Yang to take it, and because Obama Yang, you know, wants to be the leading scorer and all and, that, and he's the captain, right? And but Laka, and maybe maybe Lacazette's automatic. Well, Lacazette captained us today without Obama Yang out there, so yeah. that you know, because Lacazette is our vice captain. Yeah. So, but to to kind of wrap up the 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 talk about our squad guys, I think what what it's going to come down to for me is. How much money do we need? Do we get do we get money for getting the Champions League? Who can we sell for what to make Odegaard happen? And you know, right. if we need if Saliba's not the answer yeah. to make a right side center back yeah. happen, then I think any of those guys that are our squad dudes, if you can get you know, it will be money for them. Yeah. Then, then so, do it. So, what do you think we could sell Lacazette for? Because I want to say it's somewhere in between thirty and forty million. I would say thirty-five. Yeah. Yeah. So, so let's call it thirty-five, uh, and we can sell Inketia. We got a what a twenty-five million offer from, yeah. West, we from for, West Ham for at least a better twenty club than us yeah. for at least Tonight, twenty. Anyway. So those two players right there, that's 55. about fifty-five. That's fifty-five. I think on a, on a if we get a healthy fee for them, I think upper forties. Like forty seven, if if we, if get, we get less less than yeah. we want for them, but we still sell them, so forty. Even if we get forty seven for those two guys, we're getting pretty close to uh, to Odegaard money right mm. there. Right, because I think I think personally, I think Odegaard is worth about fifty million. Well, then there's Bellerin. I think that's consider. a fair price, and Bellerin, and and we're because Bellerin is still young ish. We're gonna get. Premium money for Be- for Bellerin, yeah. especially if he goes to PSG or Barcelona or one of the right. Or, you know, and he's not going to go to Barcelona because they don't have any money. Yeah, but, they are bankrupt. And, and PSG is the club that wants him. Pochettino wants him apparently badly. Hmm. And um, and PSG, who do they even have? M- Munir, I guess. Munier. Uh, uh, oh yeah, Serge. M e u n i e r. Yeah, yeah. Thomas Munier. Which I think is also uh, if you go to a French restaurant, they, they uh, Belgian. They'll restaurant. sell you flounder. It's like sole Munier or whatever, mm. but it, it, it's flounder. Yeah. <laughs> It's, so it's flounder with garlic and butter. Sounds good, actually. Yeah, but that sounds good. But yeah, so <sighs> anything with garlic and butter sounds yeah. good. To be fair, so I mean that those three guys right there. But if they win the Champions League, they're going to be minted. Yeah, and uh, so yeah, no. no if they win the Champions League, they'll still spend money this summer, just because they they won't want clubs to spend money and surpass them. Yeah, I think they'll they'll win the Champions League in whatever influx of money they get. They're they're gonna well, they're, they're gonna know, make a marquee signing because they're gonna know that Byron's gonna you know pick yeah. a dude out from whatever you know yeah German Byron's gonna team. go yeah go to the teams number three four and five in Germany and pick He's like we want you 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 come on there, there yeah. we got Upa Meccano coming yeah, yeah. Upa Meccano yeah yeah so it's still an arms race for the Champions they don't even League need you can't they got still. really good center backs like I mean Madrid doesn't need midfielders and yet here we well, are yeah. but, but Byron's gonna say we need him because we got knocked out of the Champions League by yeah. PSG and yeah again I, mean, I like I like Nicolas Sula. I like him a lot, and uh, Alba's been playing some center back for them. Well, and he also uh, he's on his way out. Yeah, right? he wants to go. I don't know where he is. It might be Real Madrid. Isn't I think it's Madrid. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, you know he's a hell of a player, and, and he's another one that could play like five or six different positions. And super, but on young. a level way higher than um, Ainsley Maitland Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah, and so those guys right <laughs> you, there. You almost look like you disagreed with that. No, I, I'm just saying. Okay, okay. I'm just saying. Mainsley offers us a cheap. De- he, he's a great defender. Yeah, he's not gonna. You don't have to. You don't. He's not worth Alaba money, but he can do a similar job. He's not gonna do it nearly as well, but he'll be effective. Yeah, because he. Because I remember somebody saying like, "Well, you know, he makes these slip ups, but he has such great recovery speed." He does. And yeah, well, I mean, Jaka makes slip ups too, and yet he was one of our best players today. He has so. recovery speed of that fucking tanker that got lodged in the Suez Canal. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll be back with you in eight days. To see what we're <laughs> yeah, at with yeah, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, you know, in a perfect world, we get to keep as many of those guys as we can, yeah. I think. And if we can do, like, you know, half season loans to start the year and yeah. with, with clauses to bring them back in January if there's injuries, 
you know, maybe we can keep more of those guys around. Yeah, or, or yeah, if you could, so you, you don't do a clause on a half season loan. You do a clause on a full season loan. Well, so I mean, yeah, either yeah. a half season loan yeah. or a clause on a full season loan. Or a full season loan, loan with clauses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, sure. Yeah, so. For you know, like no money or little money because usually you have to pay if you do that. Yeah, I mean, if, but honestly, at that point, the loan wouldn't be for us to get money out of it. It would just be to get them playing time. Yeah, and get them, them development. Keep to, them yeah. developing yep. and ready to go. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I, I we just, I, I think we just need to, if we're going to make that jump, we need to focus on guys that are top tier that, you know, are going to get us back to where we want to be. Um, and you know whatever has to go to make that happen. We are I think we are we where do. Liverpool was about four or five years right. ago. Where there was a great graphic that uh, I saw on Twitter yesterday where they had Barini as their yeah, Fabio uh, Barini. Yeah. yeah, just they they finished. You know, and we Alberto laughed. Moreno. I mean, yeah, we I'm laughed. Trying to at name them. some of the players from that team. Lalana was starting on that team. Yeah, and so we're trying. Lazar to, Markovic. We're, we're we're still man. We're still about three years out. Yeah, at I least a couple. Say, because you look at, and I'm still shocked that Man United is second in the league with people like Rashford, McTominay, you know, B- Beer Belly, Luke Shaw. Wait, 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 wait. Are we saying that Rashford is like trash or? I'm just saying he's not going to win you the league. Hmm. Okay. I mean, I admire I mean, him. I think, I, he's, I think he's world class. I, I admire Personally. him as a human being. Yeah. I, he, I probably admire him. He's 100% a world class human being. We know that. So but I, I admire him too. That I, think, but I think he's, he's a world class like, player. But you got other players like Eric Bailly or like when Edison Cavani scored for the other, was like Edison Cavani? Yeah. Who looks like he's about 55 years old. He looks Edison like he Cavani looks like is, is, has over the last decade consistently been one of the best finishers in world football. He's a, he's a, Even if he's fucking 52, he's a valuable player to have on your team. I think, if the they thing, get, the, I think they might get Kane. They're gonna get Kane and or and or Jaden Sancho, and so a front three of Rashford, Kane, and Sancho. I don't like that. I think right because now this is good. What's surprising about United this year is the drop off between their best players and their rest players. Like sure. that, the, um, looking at that, that, I think that's what Tom's kind of looking at. Bruno is like, Fernandez, Pogba, Rashford. Uh, I think I still think Harry Maguire is overrated. Um, he is. Uh, and Damon, Damon, Damon Lindelof. You look at Damon Lindelof and you get you just Victor. Yeah, I look at Damon Lindelof the way I Victor, look at, at a, like Victor a, a mate. Is that his name? Yeah, yeah. Victor right. Lindelof. I just look at him like I look at a like. A, 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 he's just like a dude. He's, he's a, a dude. dude. Yeah. He's, like, he's, he's like a, a lot of guys like, who are just. He's a like dude. Wonder Bread with some butter spread on it. Just we like, are so used to Man United having elite center backs right. like Nemanja, Gapstam and, yeah, I mean, and, and, and Ferdinand Nemanja, and yeah. every time I bring up Tony Adams you know some plastic Man United pops up with his fucking Avid Brothers t-shirt and Crocs on it's like well we had Nemanja Vidic I'm like oh <laughs> but Tony what? Adams captained I mean, England he captained sure Tony Adams was at Liverpool in 1989 Tony Adams was our captain in 2002 yeah you know Tony, but okay to play devil, devil's advocate Tony Adams never won a Champions League and Manu Vidic won two, I think. Well, right. I mean, it, I mean it's a factual statement. Yeah. I, I'm just saying. Uh, oh, he at least won one. I think he might have won two. But I, 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 I'm not part of that camp that thinks Vidic was anything less than absolutely elite world class. He was, he was, a, he was definitely, yeah, because because you could, I think he played for Serbia, so you could. I was like, well, how many World Cups I've, did Serbia win? I've been uh, in arguments of people talking about how. My my stance was that Vidic is better than Ferdinand, and Vidic made Ferdinand a better player. I, I between the two, if I'm if I'm I take Vidic, yeah, yeah, every time, every time. And I remember, I mean, I remember when Rio played for Leeds. Yeah, yeah. and um, uh, and did, 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 did he play for West Ham? Yes, no, yeah, he played he was, for West, he's Ham. West Ham youth. Yeah, yeah he, he played West Ham youth, and then Leeds, and then and United his, bought him from Leeds. Correct. And his brother was thirty West million, Ham. right? And his brother Anton was a West Ham youth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And their father was a, a yeah, Les yeah, Ferdinand. Yeah, um, Les Ferdinand, yeah. yep. So uh, where I'm going with all this is Tony Adams is the best center back in the history of the English game. I mean, anybody listening to this that's a neutral, Sean, if you're out there, I know you hang out at Buddies, and you might go out with, you know, like, whoa, we had Michael Dawson and Deadly Ledley King. But oh, fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that, you know, I, and I'm always going to – I'll argue for, to, for Tony Adams. Um I think Vidic is 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 up there in that conversation, but I'm going to say it's Adams. I think by the time Van Dyke's career is over with, he might have something to say about mm. that. Yeah. Um, and, uh, again, and, again, Tony Adams never won and I'm Champions gonna, League. And I'm going to be better because I'm, or, I'm sorry. Vid, um, uh, Vidic has won Champions League, but so has Van Dyke. Right. Um, and 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 not just won it, but been the maybe the best player. On the team. Okay, yeah, that's, that's kind of that's kind of that. where it's going because it, it kind of fucks me off that say for instance Harry Kane this week 
uh, Sky Sports did this interview, and then the, the question was, is there a question you would like to a- ask to Harry Kane? Yeah, yeah. And all the, the, the just fucking pedantic hack retweets. I got like, one of, my, one, of, one of the things that makes me hate Twitter is that people have these hack jokes and they, like, they get 18,000 retweets and it's all like, check his trophy cabinet, check his trophy cabinet. And I'm going, bitch, Harry Kane, once he leaves Spurs, and he will, he's going to win some fucking titles. Yeah, yeah. He, and he, he's not only is he going to win some titles, he's going to go to be a, to a Man United and be the reason that Man United right. win titles. Yeah. So yeah. this whole There's idea... There's a difference between, between, you know... A dude on a title winning team yeah, and the dude on a title know, winning team. You know, if Luke Shaw moving to Man United and they win right. something, Luke Shaw's not the reason that Man United It's kind of like when, when... Harry Kane's going to be the Roy, reason Roy Keane got a lot stuff. of traction last week because he had that comment, he had that uh, interaction with Jamie Redknapp because mm-hmm. J- Jamie Redknapp was saying that, well, Spurs are a good team, they're on the come up, and then, and then Roy Keane was like, oh, they're soft, they're soft. I'm going, oh, well, Roy, you played for fucking Man United. And, and you were good, like, but Roy Keane. And, and, and in comparison to Roy Keane, every single player ever is soft. Right. <laughs> Except right. for like Vieira and like fucking Vinny Jones. Jones. Yeah, yeah. Gonna say. Man United would have won those games without Roy Keane. Yeah. And, and I, I don't know, like, I remember my early. I don't know about that, man. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Because I don't know well, about that. Ferguson is the greatest. To me, Ferguson's the, the greatest, greatest manager yes. of all time. Yeah, sure. And I've gotten this with like people are like, well, what it, about- it's as much about what Roy Keane did on the field as about his the intangibles that he brought in the leadership thing. I think there's no player that best embodies that type of argument because I usually hate that argument. But there's no player that best embodies that type of argument than Roy Keane. I'm just saying those Man United teams were just stacked. They were top good. Yeah, sure. Bottom. Yeah. And I think if I'm Roy, just not gonna say that Roy Keane was if fucking Roy Keane takes a day off and, and they put John O'Shea in there. Or uh, uh, you know Darren Fletcher or Michael Carrick or or you know I'm trying to think of the earlier I think that's a, any of those but, is, a, is a significant time but but from they were so good on all but they're still levels. good yeah they're still good absolutely yeah and I'm still bitter that 1999 yeah, Mainsley uh, is still good but he's a significant downgrade from Thomas Party yeah. yeah sure that's that's the point I'm trying to make yeah. okay uh, yeah yeah all right. we might still win a game with Mainsley point that. taken yeah I'm just saying for Roy Keane because he he kept going on after Tottenham and I'm going. Well, Tottenham got to the Champions League final. When's the last time Man United was in a fucking Champions League final? Sure, yeah, yeah. 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 And I'll even say it right now. I, I don't think he, he talks as much shit about Man United as he talks about fucking... Well, yeah. He's, he's almost harder on Man United oh, than he is on other, other clubs. So I don't think it's a Man United yeah. bias. I think it's a Roy Keane is one of the toughest players I ever laid eyes on. And so he has Has Man United won a title without internal. Ferguson in recent memory? They won a Europa League yeah. with Mourinho. Yeah. Okay. But a, a league title. No, no, no. 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 Nope. And I guess where I'm going with all this is... But yeah, Ferguson, all this, the, point, the Ferguson point is a valid one. He's and the best it, that ever did it. Yes. And I remember like one of the guys that's a regular here, and I'm not going to say his name, but he's like... He's trying to say, like, what's that guy that won all those titles with Kentucky basketball, Adolf Rupp? He's like, well, what Adolf Rupp? I was like, Adolf Rupp didn't have to get on a goddamn airplane to Bosnia. Or, yeah. or remember, <laughs> remember Turkey when they went to play Galatasaray and, like, they have those signs up, those flares that goes, welcome to the hell. Yeah. Like, Kentucky will go to fucking Indiana. Shit. What's yeah. the worst shit that could happen in Indiana other than... Uh, you are here. I, I mean, Kentucky I actually bitched out of that rivalry. They won't play that game anymore. What's the t- what's the toughest thing that can happen but. to Indiana for a group of fifteen <laughs> black people? Right, where <laughs> there's more clan in Indiana, and I kind of was like, I'm just as saying, soon as I said, I was like, fuck, I know he's going to go there. Yeah, there's tough things that could happen yeah. to that team. But, in Indiana, but I'm you know, saying. Man United fans, I want to say no, it was Leeds fans. Leeds fans have been murdered in Turkey. I don't yeah. know how many Man yeah. United. There have probably been people definitely stabbed and all that, but. Yeah, Turks are different. They're they're, and, and, they're different gravy, bro. Yeah, if you if you want a good long read, <laughs> find Turkish football fans. Spencer Hall did a a, a long form on uh, one of the Istanbul derbies, and it is one of the greatest pieces of sport journalism I've ever read. Uh, and it just gives you a, a, a look into how absolutely batshit crazy those people yeah. are over there. Right? Yeah, they're fans. Uh, they're Gal- fans. Galatasaray versus Fenerbahce. Yeah, yeah. yeah. the uh, they're uh, just the Correo, the Tifo. The passion, it is extremely admirable. Yeah. It is, wow, because only the, the Italians are the best. The, 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 the crowd interaction, the Italians are the best, but the Turks are right up there with them. Yeah. You know, like, the Ameri- Italians Ameri- are the best? Yes. I mean, they, I, I they, think, they I, invented I, I posit, it. They invented and I think it. you might agree with me. I posit that the Italians are definitely one of, the, one, of the, one of the best groups of fans, one of the best fan bases is Bruce e. Dortmund. Sure, but the in, in the entirety of Europe or the world. Well, I mean, the top by a mile is Celtic, mm-hmm. and, and I've been to Celtic. Yeah. Sure. And last weekend, I met someone that's an Aston Villa fan, and he he's actually a Closet Rangers fan, being a Villa guy. But 
no one top Celtic. It is it is wow. It's insane. Yeah. Man. Yeah, it is everything. The singing, the um I remember I was I was standing next to this guy, he had tattoos on his palms of his hands, the top of his hands, mm. and Damn, palms are hands? And okay. everybody, everybody's standing up, and, and they're singing, you'll never walk alone, raising their scarves in the air, and they got lights going. And then he sat down, and he took his glasses off, and was wiping his eyes yeah. because that moved him. Yeah. And Liverpool fan? Well, there's, there's a big argument about who did you'll never walk alone well, first. first. Yeah, sure. yeah. Um, but Celtic, You're talking about a Celtic, man. Yes, yeah, yeah. and Celtic, you know, Celtic, they sing the entire time. They're passionate about it, and... I, I, I'll admit, I will admit, I was jealous because I cringe every time Arsenal does. And it's, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't. Because every what do you mean, team. By far the got every, yeah. everyone. Because it's such a, it's such I've a. Grown, s- I've grown to kind of, I've grown to, to kind of loathe that. It's that such change. a slow song you can yeah. work any team name yeah. into it. Yeah. And we're Brighton Hope, Burnley FC, Crystal Palace is by far. It's just, yeah. it's just <laughs> and then it's like by far. You're fucking. Works Brighton best Hove. if your team name has three syllables like Everton. But it, I yes, mean, but you can do it. But, you but, can, you but can, we're all musicians here. Yeah. Like yeah. we yeah. all know, like a trick you can do. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. To, to 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 adjust the meter. Um, but yeah, I'm uh, Italians. I mean Italians. The reason South American fans are so passionate was because of all the expats. Yeah, yeah. They, they brought that. And in England, it's also a fact. English fans were, like, the pictures were out there. They, like, people worked in factories, and on Saturday, their day off, they would show up with their best wool coats and tweed. And in, 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 in like, 1909, it was like, oh, well done, chats, well done. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then the Italians, the Italians came over, and it's like, no, we're passionate people. You know, there are more things to cook with other than just chicken broth and salt. <laughs> and, and we're going to teach you how to do chanting and singing. And to this day, and I know Dortmund is, I mean, I'm, I'm not taking away from I'm not saying they're crap, but the Italians, because even if you look at the Italian league, even smaller teams like Brescia, mm-hmm. lunatics with TIFO the size of airport runways mm-hmm. that sing the entire time. And Turkey does the same thing, man. Yeah. Yeah. So... For anyone out there listening, man, don't put those teams down. You know, because uh, well, don't put their supporters down. Cause right, and and what else? Some of the best supporters out there in Europe are from some of the exactly. lesser known countries yeah. like but, your Turkey and because I'll see a lot Scotland's, of stuff on Twitter. Like, was it was it one our Czechoslovakia, group? Czechoslovakia, the was Ukraine. It, was it our group chat where some guy like I think it was you 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 uh, you screen capped. Some guy that was like a Chelsea fan that responded to Arsenal. Oh yeah, it was. And it then was his a, avatar was Neymar. Neymar. Yeah. yeah. It was like a picture of ESR, and his his avatar was Neymar. His name was like Havertz. Yeah, yes. Havertz. Right. And then he says, "Come to Chelsea." Like, first of all, fuck off. Second yeah. of all, pick something, man. Who, what yeah. the hell? Right. Who are you? Right. What 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 do you want? Yeah. You know, because I, I love thing. Neymar as a player, but I would never have him as my fucking Twitter. Well, and so yeah. not if you're a Chelsea fan, what yeah. the hell are you doing? And, uh, you and know. people and people like to use this whole like, oh, you're a you know a Brescia fan, lol. And but those people that are from there, because I I mean I've met <laughs> they'll fucking kill you for saying right. Because like I remember yeah. I remember I mean I'm over here right by the bar that two top. There was somebody that came in here when Stoke played us, and he's from Stoke, and he was passionate as shit. And you know people are like Stoke, lol. He's from Stoke. He'll probably kick your head in. Yeah, yeah. that's this local team. Like, well, yeah. yeah, that's so, that's actually really admirable. Right. Yeah, it, it's it's not as easy as putting a fucking name or avatar out there with yeah. a Chelsea name and yeah. and whatever. Like, yeah. you, you probably go to sleep with a Barcelona kit. And, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and your bed sheets with are Man around. City shorts. Right. Exactly. Or yeah, you're like that a PSG flag. Yeah, out PSG front. socks. Yep. Yep. Like, we, <laughs> you know, uh, all the backbone of a, a cocktail shrimp. Yeah. 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 Well. That was a fascinating digression into it really fandom was. in Europe, really honestly. Um, but we are we are running out of time here, so that was a uh, that was that was the game that we haven't seen in a while and we wanted to see. Um, so up next, it is in Europa the semis against Villarreal. So good evening to you all. Good evening. And uh, before that, good however, evening. we've got Fulham in the league bright and early Sunday morning, 8.30 for those of you on Eastern Time. We don't win that uh, game. I'm drinking a bleach cocktail. Well, the, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure we can find that for us. So anyway, until then, I am Ryan. This is Tom. I'll see y'all later. And that's Joey. We out. And we'll catch you next time. <laughs> <laughs>